Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode of WebPage Test Live. Um, we want to apologize about the delays. We were having some technical difficulties that were completely out of our hands. Uh, you know how it is for conference goers, you know, that want to do some live coding. It's like, you know, <laughs> the coding gods hopefully will be with us. Today, the broadcast gods were not. That's totally fine. I'll deal with them at a separate time. But uh, what I do want to do is, uh, first of all, welcome our esteemed guest today. Uh, would you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Henri. Hi, everybody. My name is Tim. I'm based out of Belgium, and I'm a web performance enthusiast since many, many years. And today I work, I both have a job at Akamai as a web performance consultant, and I also run the largest scale modeling website in the world, which is next to the largest one, actually also the fastest one. Okay. Well, you know, you get two awards for that. So that's uh, that's good to hear. Um, first of all, thanks for joining us, uh, and uh, for a number of reasons, because uh, we had a bunch, we had some plans that sort of you know went south, and uh, I was happy to hear that you were available. So uh, I do appreciate you coming in on on short notice. Uh, and for folks out there, uh, Tim's an amazing uh, engineer. Uh, if you don't follow him, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll get uh, I'll put your tweet up uh, on the page soon. But Tim, someone you should absolutely follow. Uh, he shares a lot of his own personal fightings uh, with this site, uh, with the community, and it's very insightful. Um, so today we're actually going to have, I mean, a bunch of conversations. First of all, we haven't seen each other in a little while. I think the last time we uh, we spoke was at um, a Toronto Webperf meetup, actually, Correct. Correct. Uh, which was some time ago. So I'll probably drop that uh, link in the chat at some point. Um, but... The good thing is that uh, we are going to have a, a few conversations, but we're actually uh, also, pardon me, we're actually also going to do what we love to do here at Web Pitch Test Live, which is some live audits. Um, but the one thing I actually want to talk to you about, um, just sort of like in catch up and in recent news, um, there was the uh, I noticed that a few people are talking about the uh, experimental uh, features that that were just, uh, I guess, the metrics that yes. just came out. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? So the, the, I get you're, you're talking about the responsiveness metric, which came out. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of, of it because I was actually not a big fan of first input delay, uh, mm -hmm. which was currently one of the core web vitals. And in my view, I, I love core web vitals. I love CLS. I love LCP. But FID was basically the third yeah, I, I was really not happy with it because it was really not meaningful um, because the f your first input might be fast, but if your second input is slow, then who cares that your first one was uh, was uh, was fast? And I think the new responsiveness, the responsiveness metric, uh, really fixes the issues we have with uh, with with FID. So I'm looking forward to um, to seeing that data. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be very interesting, actually. And, you know, uh, shout out to the team over there, the speed team, um, Annie Sullivan and, and everyone working on uh, on uh, on uh, on that. Um, you know, the funny thing, well, not funny, but the interesting thing is that uh, the Core Web Vitals were always introduced as something that was going to possibly evolve in all likelihood would evolve, you know, because, you know, we're discovering stuff all the time. And that also means that, you know, some adjustments have to be made, uh, you know, thereafter. So uh, it, it's been uh, interesting to see that sort of come about and uh, some measurements, uh, you know, come out in the public uh, fairly, uh, fairly early. Uh, at some point, I'll find the tweet and, and post it in the chat or something like that. One of the things that I did uh, mention in our conversations before you came on, and for everyone that's listening, one of the things that we definitely do do at uh, web page test is remind folks that uh for all the uh sort of testing and profiling that we do uh we also remind you that uh you know our default settings even though they are uh usa dollars 4g um the opportunity is always there for you to test and you know use devices in different markets and uh, one of the reasons why i was excited to have you aboard is that being across the atlantic from myself right now by the way Good evening, you know, because uh, I do realize it's dinner time. So hopefully I'm not cutting into uh, dinner with the family. But uh, the important part, uh, as I mentioned, is that 
the ability for us to do some testing with devices in different parts of the world is absolutely important. Um, so, you know, something that we've been sort of digging away at more recently. So I'm excited to have you aboard and, and have that sort of worldly uh, perspective that we don't always talk about directly, but uh, having someone who essentially is not in the sort of like North American um, market and who likely understands having to test in, you know, uh, Belgium, having to test in, you know, parts of Europe that may not have like the best uh, connectivity, uh, that must be sort of like second nature to you. So that's going to be uh, awesome to to discuss. Um, did uh, did we want to get into some um, auditing um, right away? And you should be able to see my screen now. Is that correct? So I see it, and I'm going to add it to the screen. A little stream right now, and we are in business. Finally, Perfect. a semblance of normalcy to this, uh, what should have been an amazing day, but now it's just ama amazing with a notch below. Uh, but uh, Tim, the screen is yours. So uh, what are we looking at? Uh, so yeah, this is just, this was just as an, uh, as an intro. So this is uh, my website, which is heavily optimized when it comes from performance perspective in the evening when my wife falls asleep in front of the television i pick my laptop and i fine tune css and remove dom nodes to make everything as fast as possible mm -hmm. but we are not here to look at my website but we will have a look at and in order to keep the team we will look at some key scale modeling brand websites and compare the performance of how they do. I think uh, last time you looked at um, the um, electric vehicles together with Paul Calvano, uh, my yes, colleague. Yeah. Um, so, and I heard that you're a big fan of uh, vehicles. So basically, I picked out some uh, scale modeling um, uh, scale modeling uh, vehicles, and we will have a look at, um, at, at those. Um, awesome. So those websites are typically a little bit smaller. They're not; they don't get millions and millions of visitors. So it might be interesting to see at how they do and how they handle uh, performance. Absolutely. Um, and the one thing. Oh no! Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I was going to say, and and I was actually sharing this with uh, some people um, at work uh, over at uh, in the team Slack. Teams, whatever it's called, um, you've actually been using Web Page Test for a number of years. Correct, correct. Yeah, I I think I use Web Page Test daily, and yeah, I can't count the years, but yeah, it's definitely a long time. I'm definitely a long time user and a long time fan. Awesome, awesome, man. You know, you something like someone like yourself has obviously been able to see that progression, especially in the uh, sort of like UI uh, area. And, and and you you were around during the very rigid days of uh, just like raw data, you know, no stylings, just like hey, take it or leave it, you know. Yeah. So it's uh, it's always good to to have that conversation with someone who's been around uh, and understands uh, where it came from. Yeah, I still have some muscle memory for from the old side. So uh, here and there, you might see uh, me going to a location where it, there is actually no longer a link. <laughs> ah, it's all right. We have plenty of time. Perfect, you know, perfect. So. Uh, do you have a preference of which website to start? Uh, this one, the um, Airfix, which is a, a UK brand. Uh, you have here, which this is a Czech brand. This is a German slash US brand. You might know it from Monogram. I think that's more well known in the US and Canada. Um, any preference? I mean, let's go with this one right here. Perfect. So uh, let's go to... You uh, know, let, 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 let's look like at some American muscle on a foreign yeah, site. Perfect. Perfect. So one of the first things I do, of course, I, I copy paste the URL. I rarely use the simple configuration. I typically mm -hmm. straight away go to the advanced configuration. And then I do, when I do a performance test, I like to do two, I like to look at two extremes. Mm -hmm. I know most of us, they look at 3G, 4G, mm -hmm. but I actually like to test uh, using the native connection. Okay. Uh, and then, for example, from a location which is, I think, far away from the origin. So this, I know they are in Germany. So then I would do a test typically from within Sydney. Uh, I will now not, not run it. But why would I pick that? Because if a website is using a CDN, I will, with these settings, instantly see objects which are served from cache should be like lightning fast because mm -hmm. the CDN has no impact. Mm -hmm. And every object not 
being part of the cache, a dynamic or where caching was, was forgotten, you would then see like a very, very long uh, time. So that's when I use the, um, uh, that's when I use these settings. Another thing I like to do is I would basically then go to uh, the location they are uh, very close to. Mm -hmm. And then, for example, use uh, FIOS. Um, and let me actually run that uh, run that uh, test. That's basically my default uh, setting. And the reason why, because the reason why I don't use the slower connections is because I then can, I can then identify slow time to first bytes coming from the origin, and then I know it's not network uh, not network related. And normally, if we then look at the waterfall, we should still see. Um, let's, for, let's take the third run, for example. Here, you can then instantly see that this is 459 milliseconds, time mm -hmm. to first byte. Mm -hmm. And I'm using a very fast connection, and I'm using a location which is close to the origin. Mm -hmm. So basically, here I know that their origin is basically slow for generating that HTML. If I would have mm. taken a 3G connection, then a portion of this is gets uh, let's say you get some additional noise because it becomes uh, you you think oh it might be due to the mobile connection so that's that's uh, that's my uh, standard um, setting so what I normally do is normally I don't look first at the waterfall the first things I do is I click on the um, on the diagram and then let me just adjust the film strips to a huge. Mm -hmm. And I like to look at it in a 0 0.1 thing because mm -hmm. the first thing I want to know, I want to understand is what is the user experiencing? And that this film strip is one of my favorite features in WebH mm -hmm. test. Mm -hmm. So here we see that after 0 0.8 seconds, mm -hmm. which is reasonable, we see the first paint, we start seeing the menu. Mm -hmm. And then a bit later, you can actually see that the hero image is loaded. So from mm -hmm. an LCP perspective, in theory, um, this is going in the right direction, but you instantly see, a, in my view, a big problem is you can't read the menu, you mm -hmm. can't read the text, mm -hmm. and you need to wait a little bit longer before you can actually see the mm -hmm. data. So with this in mind, I have now have my already an idea. What should I? What do I want to look at? A few things. Can we improve the first paint? That's mm -hmm. one thing. What can we do to make potentially the image? load even a little bit faster, mm -hmm. but mainly from a user experience perspective, I think the thing we should fix is uh, making sure that the text is also visible um, sooner. So in in a quick recap, um, you had picked the sort of um, home location with a fast connection to see what it would be like in a best case scenario. Correct. Correct. Perfect. So then um, with that base, you can also make your assessment as to what some of the, uh, what are going to be likely major, well, not major, bigger problems if you start to slow things down in a much further location. Correct. Correct. Okay. And, and uh, okay, so for anyone who may not have caught that, you know, and, you know, uh, someone with... Tim's experience, you know, may sort of like run through this um, with uh, speed, but, you know, uh, he has a very um, solid strategy so that, you know, he can pick up some of the issues in a very best case scenario, awesome connection, you know, uh, you know, at home, you know, German website loading, you know, in Germany, knowing that, you know, some of the challenges that he sees then will certainly manifest themselves when, you know, someone from, say, California wants to access the site and or like he talked about someone in Australia. So I just want to recap that for people listening. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so the, one of the next things I then do is I look at the waterfall. Mm -hmm. um, and let me go down. Ah, sorry. I, I actually don't like this feature of the of the so I, there is this uh, scroll film strips with page you can I think remove that and then you can just go down so that's that's perfect um, so what you see, uh, so here we already discovered that the time to first byte is likely due to a slow origin mm -hmm. and it's not that the origin can't be fast because here you see like 14 milliseconds for mm -hmm. a CSS file mm -hmm. although it's small 
but that looks like very, very reasonable. Uh, the other thing I see instantly is this, that this page seems to use H1. And the reason it's using H1 is because I see multiple connections being opened here. So let's just double check. Yes, yeah, so here we see HTTP1. So wow. that could be a way to uh, improve is just uh, in, um, enable um, H2, uh, basically enable H2 instead of uh, H1. Mm -hmm. um, from a, if you're looking at the length of the waterfall, I would say it's reasonable. The amount of third parties, I would say, is also reasonable. So here you have one, another one, but may, this basically looks uh, looks uh, looks fine. So the main problem we saw, uh, if if we can, if they can speed up their HTML delivery, either by you ca caching at a CDN or at applying some optimizations to their database. Mm -hmm. If they basically speed up this with 200 milliseconds, then everything will shift more to the left with mm -hmm. my 200 milliseconds. So that's basically a no-brainer. Um, looking at, there's basically nothing here which really stands out. Here, this image looks 53.9 kilobytes. I guess it's a, uh, da -da -da -da. it's likely a, J it's a JPEG. But mm -hmm. yeah, that looks OK. But the key problem we see here is that these red ones, those are the fonts, so mm -hmm. that's 32 and 34. They arrive around 0 0.8. Oh, so they arrive. Yeah, sorry. They <laughs> arrive. They're ready here. So we should. Ten, 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 ten. That's then a good question. Why? Ah, sorry. This is actually the. Is this the font? Yeah. So like they seem to load two fonts here, that are here. on the screen. Yes. Uh, but at the time of the loading of the font, let's actually go. So here the font was, so this line corresponds to this red line. Mm -hmm. So although the fonts here are already present, mm -hmm. you don't see them. You don't see yeah. them here. You don't see them here. So what seems to happen, and here you actually now spotted two additional fonts. Mm -hmm. And basically, when do you see the content here mm -hmm. and here? is when these two fonts loaded. So from yeah. a performance perspective, they basically loaded two fonts here, which are from a first page view uh, useless. Mm -hmm. And only at a later stage, they load these two. So that's something they need to fix. Um, a, if these fonts are not used, potentially get rid of them. And these two beauties here at the end, they should load it earlier. ideally preload them. So they, um, they are loaded here. And then likely at first paint, they will likely already see the uh, the content. And then yeah. at largest content for paint, it would also be uh, be meaningful. Um, yeah. But other than that, let's say the website looks, um, I think if you would show this earlier on mm -hmm. and then fix the HTML, then there are not a lot of more special things uh, I would directly uh, do there we have some more beautiful examples later on yeah, um, yeah. what is good here is they they load their jquery library straight away from their own domain so they mm -hmm. don't use a third party mm -hmm. uh, which in 2022 does not make sense to do so that's that's positive uh, also when you're looking at the byte sizes of their css mm -hmm. um, one to two kilobytes uh, wow. here is, uh, yeah. 30 kilobytes Eight or nine kilobytes. Yeah, you could argue. Yeah, this maybe one thing is that's something I see a lot. So yes, they have multiple CSS files, mm -hmm. and here you have like this zero dot one kilobyte. Yeah, which is actually quite small. Yeah, and in my view, is and it's debatable, but in my view, very very small CSS files. It is actually faster to uh, to merge them with an other file, so you can get better benefits of. Uh, gzipping and compression ratio will be better and you don't have the overhead of additional requests. Um, so I would potentially try to put these into one of the uh, mm -hmm. one of the uh, one of the others. This is super interesting because <clears throat> first of all, um, good afternoon, Pat Meenan, who's in the chat. Hey Pat. Uh, the interesting um, mentions here were that you know, some of the CSS files that you covered, uh, first of all, blocking files, blocking resources, and on H1, which I thought were was very interesting. You know, so right away, uh, you, you sort of have um, 
you know, like a double whammo almost because you had mentioned the fact that they were H1. And, you know, in fact, maybe um, how do you feel about maybe sharing the uh, the URL in the chat so people could maybe follow along? I don't know. The the chat of the um, of the film strip, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Just drop it in there and we'll see uh, if it doesn't uh, get in there. I'll, I'll drop it in myself. But, you know. Uh, yeah. I can't see. I don't know why. Uh, let me add it in. I'll add it in the private chat. Okay, and cool. If you can and I'll put it in the, that would be good. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, and I'll do that. So we'll share the uh, URL that we're playing with here uh, in the chat, and so that people could uh, follow along. But um, that was very interesting because, again, you talked about the very minute CSS files. And they're so puny, there's actually greater overhead to send them, which is, you know, again, pretty interesting if, if you start to, you know, think about it that way. Um, also, something else that you'd mentioned, uh, I'm trying to think here, you'd mentioned the CSS files. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, yeah, and the fonts. So uh, essentially, again, for people following along, the most crucial font, like some fonts were being loaded, but the most crucial font that we needed to sort of uh, create like uh, that, you know, user experience that people want so that, you know, they see something's going on, something's happening on the page, they can start to read in the details. It's coming in last, you know, and unfortunately there's some other fonts that are coming in that are not visible at all uh, within this sort of, you know, our critical rendering path. So um, essentially, even if they were just swapped, the ones that were not showing up uh, for the ones uh, that are important and that are coming in late, that we would probably have, uh, again, a, a much better experience here. Um, but yeah, the, you know, again, every, every site's got its own sort of little challenge and it's good to sort of take a look. And even though it's a small site and like you'd mentioned, it's not like this multinational massive enterprise, but you can see some of these challenges on a small scale and how they could potentially be uh, a lot more serious at a larger scale. So no, that was a, that was a very interesting uh, case study right there. Yeah, perfect. And here you can actually see the, I just clicked on the CSS file. Mm -hmm. So that's that small one, basically two, wow. um, two CSS rules. Um, so my view merged yeah. them with the others and uh, yeah. you make your life a lot, uh, a lot easier. Now this was one um, which basically you didn't have uh, that many uh, options. So let's have a look at the test history. Um, and I have a message here from uh, Paul Calvano who says, might also be interesting to look at how they are using the fonts. Are some of them only styling a few characters, et cetera? CSS overview in uh, DevTools is awesome for looking at this. Yeah, I fully, fully agree with Paul. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what are we looking at here? Uh, so here we're looking at the hist test history oh, okay. of yes. uh, of the things. So let me just open. Um, let me open this one and this one, and we just had the, that one. Where is it? And this fire truck is also nice to to look at. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, let's let's have a look. Let's have a look here. So this this was the website with um, with the uh, where is it now? Here it is with uh, this one. So if you click, you get that big hero image. So it might mm -hmm. be interesting to know if the hero image, this big image is loaded up front. Mm -hmm. And here you see like a lot of files. So uh, let's, have a, let's have a look at, uh, at, at that. So this is also tested from, this is tested from Stockholm and then uh, the late, uh, one of the latest versions of Chrome, again, FIOS. Mm -hmm. So again, I'll do the same thing. Click on the uh, film strip and then see adjust the film strip sessions to huge. So you can look along and mm -hmm. then have a look at 0.1. Mm -hmm. because then you can really see the nice details. Mm -hmm. So what you see here is that the time to first byte compared to the previous one is a lot faster. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still not fast, but it's it's faster. But it does take a lot more time before you can actually see something on screen. So that's mm -hmm. one four seconds. Yeah. When you see something, it's what I like is you can actually restart reading mm -hmm. what is on the page. So that's Absolutely. good. A little bit later, although the hero image is not there, uh, you can read the product information, the barcode. Uh, you can start consuming things, so that's poten potentially good. Mm -hmm. But then you can see it. It takes like a big time before the image is actually being uh, loaded. So that's 
straight away indicates yeah. that something needs to be improved there. Yeah. So if you look at the waterfall, at the let me disable scroll film strips. Is it no um, scroll? Um, so what do we see here? Is they are using H2 because you see here the first connection. This is a different domain. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, they're not using H2. H1 as well. Um, so it seems that the scale modeling websites have not looked at H2 yet. Uh, so that's another thing they can um, do. Um, and but this, they have like a lot of uh, CSS files. And then here you see the first images. So the this is the logo, which mm -hmm. is uh, let's have a look. Oh, that's the logo, which looks mm -hmm. okay. And here you have the first image. That's the mm. that's our hero image. So from a loading persp order perspective, it makes in my view it makes sense that the logo is shown first, and mm -hmm. then the the hero image. You might argue that from an LCP perspective, it's better to load the hero image first, but for me, the natural loading of the site is from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. So I actually like it when I see the logo first, and then a little bit later the hero element. For me, that makes um, that makes that makes sense. These two very long TCP connections look a bit weird, but let's ignore that for now. But what, as you can see here, we are on a quite a fast connection. So we mm -hmm. were on iOS, and it does take. Uh, for our big image, it's 725 milliseconds. And here you see 348 kilobytes. Now, if you would do the same test on 4G or 3G, then this would really explode. But you can still <laughs> see that uh, even on a fast connection, it takes a lot of time. And I think this is really the best feature of web page test since the invention of sliced bread. Okay. Is the fact that you can see these dark areas where you can actually see the bytes being downloaded. Mm -hmm. and what you're basically seeing here is that the priorities on the web server, basically it downloads a little bit of this, next a little bit of the, the other image, next mm -hmm. a little bit of the other image. And that's the reason why the image here starts loading. Mm -hmm. and then it basically is downloading other stuff. And then at a certain point in time, you download more. So a few things how to fix that mm -hmm. is a fix your web server. That's one thing. Or use more modern formats, like in this case, it's JPEG, WebP, or AVIF um, yeah. would also help to reduce that, uh, reduce that problem, not only on this image, but also on all these other images. Because in the end, this small one, as you can see here, if you would go up, you would see that this small one actually also impacts the mm -hmm. bigger image. So every byte you can shave off of these images by using more modern formats will move everything more to the um, left. To, yeah, left. But yeah, so, I think, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. You finish that sentence? Yeah, so I would just want to say, but I think the core crucial problem here is the priority thing is that images are not loaded, let's say, one by one. And the mm -hmm. most important first is everything is like downloaded in in parallel so that's more a web server setting and for example switching to a cdn might just fix that uh, instantly so another great point here uh for those listening uh who may not be familiar with you know uh everything that's going on here um and again shout out to paul uh pat pardon me uh because you know some of these features uh as tim said are the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, and shout outs to Jeff who likes sourdough bread, by the way, in case he's listening. But um, really important because what is happening right there, the darker areas of the uh, resource loading are the actual bytes being loaded. So when it goes light again, that's when it's not downloading. And then it goes dark again, is when it is downloading again. So um, as Tim mentioned, you're having uh, images that are being loaded in chunks and that is being um, shown in the waterfall as well because you'll see some of these images that are just sitting there that look like a banner when they're actually not. It's you know only part of the image that's being uh, actually downloaded or that is downloaded at that very moment. 
H1 versus H2 is a big issue with the image prioritization per pat meaning since they are H1 uh, six at a time and network needs to just deal with it. And absolutely. And, you know, it's very interesting because, you know, we start to forget that H1 is actually still out there in the field. You know, even though H2 has been around, I think, like five, six, seven years now, something like that. And we just assume that, you know, the majority of content is coming down the pipe through H2. But I remember, you know, with uh, uh, Paul, who's in the audience right now, uh, we had done uh, an audit that we have yet to publish. Apologies, Paul. But um, we are surprised to see, uh, I think, like it was a, an image server that had a bunch of you know, stuff coming down the pipe in H1. And we're like, what? Is this a mistake? And uh, we actually thought it was, you know, because sometimes, you know, people forget to throw some switches on and whatnot. But, you know, these are very important details because they tend to manifest themselves in these kind of moments. Um, yes, um, makes sense. Um, so overall if you're looking at another let's have a look at the uh, just to have a look at the content uh, by mime type mm -hmm. in general you see they have mainly images um for, from the, from a request perspective and also on the bytes perspective it's mainly images javascript um from uh, javascript second uh, but yeah for this website because they have like very nice and big images i would i, I think if they fix their, um, yeah, if they would switch to H2 and then improve their image uh, bytes by using more modern formats, I think at first glance, this would help this website um, most of the time. Let's, let's go back to performance summary. Mm -hmm. um, that would help. Um, Let's have a look here because here we don't see those very long ones. Let's have another look. It's a pretty um, long waterfall as well, actually. Yeah, it's a long waterfall. So another thing they should definitely do is basically do, if you see here, all the images being loaded mm -hmm. at the bottom. Uh, so they might have to add the loading lazy uh, native, uh, native attribute, which is an easy fix to do and which will likely also soon come to Safari, which makes me, uh, makes me, a, happy, uh, makes me a happy man. Um, here, yeah, it seems that the TCP connections were the very long ones on the previous one. Um, they are not here. Now, this website is actually based in the Ukraine, so that might have might explain a few um, uh, things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so lo lazy loading of the images would definitely would definitely uh, would definitely help with them mm -hmm. because these ones you can even not yeah you can you can only see them if you click around and then click here on photos so it's mm. like lazy loading really would yeah uh, would, uh, would make sense here yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Da -da -da -da. do you want me to go deeper or do shall we just go switch to the to the next one and uh, have a look uh, at a um, bit more yeah let's look at let's look at something else i mean again these are very interesting um case studies they're good to look at you know uh you know, everyone's got a particular situation, so I, I think it's fun to sort of go through and and unearth some some of the immediate um, issues that uh, we're able to uh, to to pick up on. Yeah. Um, so now let's look at this one. This is the uh, Edward. So this website is in the Czech Republic, mm -hmm. and you see here a, a rather smaller image, but you have like this huge background image. So that will be mm -hmm. interesting to see. And then a lot of smaller thumbnails and related products. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at the um, at the performance summary, um, LCP of 2.8 seconds, which is on the higher end, mm -hmm. um, and um, we have first byte at 1600 yeah. milliseconds, which is you know, which is really really long. And uh, and that's a little eye opening. <laughs> So, so let's have a look. Yeah, it seems to be always the case. So one of the first things you'll see around the time, high time to first buy it is mm -hmm. that I clicked on a link mm -hmm. and basically I get a 301 response. Uh, yeah, a redirect. And uh, what you actually see here is for some reason they have this, I think this must be like the session ID. Mm -hmm. And then for whatever reason, they decide that this session ID is no longer valid. So they redirect to another one mm -hmm. now what is the problem here is if 
one of their customers shares this link in a forum or on Facebook or on Twitter, say, hey, look at this nice thing. All users click on that link, including the session ID, and they would basically all get that additional uh, yeah. that additional penalty. On top of that, even without this, this the actual time to first buy it is it's also an issue. Yeah. Uh, so that's definitely something to fix. And again, here we're looking at uh, from Amsterdam, FIOS, and this they are based in Czech Republic. So mm -hmm. this is definitely a backend uh, problem. Mm. Um, I had a quick question for you. Sure. And um, this is from uh, your first, uh, the first um, page that we looked at. And this is, you know, in all likelihood, uh, uh, probably like a preference of yours. Uh, I think we had looked at the third run first. Is there a particular reason why you did that? Yeah, I um, because when I... I like to test like under, I either like to test under worst conditions or under best conditions. Mm -hmm. And in this case, for example, if they would have used the CDN and I would test it because these webs, uh, these websites are not visited, let's say that frequently. So there is a risk that the first view would, would hit a cold cache at, mm -hmm. uh, at the CDN level. Mm -hmm. And in this case, I don't want to, let's say I, I wanted to, if I look at the third one or the last one, then I know that I'm looking at best case conditions. And if I yeah. then see a file which takes too long, then I know it can't be due to, oh, it's um, it's it's potentially um, um, it's potentially not yet in cache. Mm -hmm. Got it. Cool, 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 cool. Um, but great questions. Um, thank you for those. Um, no one, one of the first things I see here is there, you see here this yeah, if you're looking at the file names, logo, icon, English, those are like the flags. And then you have here the actual object. Mm -hmm. So you actually have many smaller images which actually load before the uh, the actual hero image. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that, uh, so yeah, there are visible, uh, but yeah, adding late, yeah. In my mm -hmm. view, those are really not needed. And I, I would try not to that time. them. Yeah. Um, so basically, preloading their hero image, I would say, would make uh, would make sense. Mm -hmm. um, what I another thing I noticed is they use jQuery UI CSS, but they use it from a third party domain, which, in my view, is yeah today in twenty twenty one does not make uh, sense. I would self host this because uh, in the past browsers would. You could reuse this jQuery UI uh, because they visited another website first. But um, today, browsers have separate caches for different um, different websites you visit. So even if 30 seconds earlier you visited, you downloaded this file from another while visiting another website, the browser would still download this. So moving this to a third party, having this on a third party, in my view, doesn't make sense. And I would rather move it to the dub dub dub. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's one thing to uh, to fix. Yeah, preload the image, and actually, let's we didn't do what I normally do. Uh, we didn't look at the film strip. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm a bit out of uh, things. So what do we see here? Is yeah, a long time, but in, theor in theory, yeah, I think if they would do some, they can easily shave. I think they can easily shave off one second. Uh, from this now what i like to do then just to is basically cheat is uh -oh. i basically say inspect and i say if i think that they will save uh one and uh, one second i basically you can basically just go here delete and then delete so now i shave up another half a second and then you can like and if they would fix this after one and a half seconds, you would see that. After two seconds, you would see that. After oh, two seconds, you're like, hey. look at you. Otherwise, you're like constantly like thinking, and this is like, oh, th this is already like a completely different uh, loading experience uh, loading story. And then, yeah, you can, um, um, yeah, you can focus on the on the right on the right on the right mm -hmm. things. Um, so other things here is let's have a look at the size. 203 kilobytes also on the higher end on this connection it does not really matter but mm -hmm. if it's on a slower connection this would likely explode so having mo modern formats would help here as well 
and la loading lazy you see all these images yeah uh, all these images they are wow. definitely though they're not the biggest ones just adding lazy loading lazy loading would make sense and let me and scroll film strip yeah. Uh, um, and so here we see the fonts. There are five of five of them, which in my view is a little bit too much. It's like do we really need five fonts for the design? Maybe yeah. every font you can get rid of is good. So here we're looking at 46 kilobytes, 46, 15, 14, which is okay. So yeah, getting rid of the fonts. And um, pum, 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 pum. what else do I see? Let me check in the chat. Um, right. Um, where am I? Here. So at first, yeah, basically get rid of the 301. And a nice technique how to get rid of these 301s is actually redirect liquidation. Redirect liquidation. I wrote a blog post about it on um, Web Performance Calendar. There it is. Okay. Um, and I'll add it in the chat. If you could paste it in the public chat, that yep, would be absolutely. Awesome. Thank you for that. So basically, what it does is you visit the old URL, mm -hmm. and if you have, so you see here you see do you request the old URL? You mm -hmm. see instantly get a 200 but then the page gets a 200 back and let me actually show you let me let me show you live what that does and let me actually log out attack on scale mates so inspect yeah so suppose uh, let's click here on the doc suppose this is like the old url the seo team decided to change something whatever so if i hit that enter yeah. what happens is you see, I get a status 200 back okay. for the old URL, yeah. but I do see the new URL in here. And the thing, the, the only thing you need to do basically is in your, what I do is if I, I add this script, history replace state, mm -hmm. I basically say that the URL, the old one, yeah. needs to be modified to uh, this one. So this removes the need for the redirect, because in this case, the I know what already know what the URL, the correct URL is. So I basically mm -hmm. show new content and update the thing. The only thing you need to do is if you see it's a bot like Google Crawler, you mm -hmm. don't want to do that because otherwise the old URL stays in the index and you want to give that 301 or 302 actually is a signal to the to the crawler. So that's something they could do here. Um, they could do here as um, as well. Make sense? I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I catch that. I caught that. Yeah. So main thing here: time to fix, time to first byte. Mm -hmm. um, get uh, to load jQuery UI from their own domain. Make sure that the hero element is preloaded mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, served in a new modern format. And then likely a big thing will be lazy, adding loading, load, uh, lazy loading load, the majority of the images on, on yeah. the images, and that should be fine. And that likely will then also change the behavior of these fonts. They will move up, and that mm -hmm. will instantly change the the loading of this uh, this waterfall. And also, this is the one that had the uh, the flags that were loading really early for no reason at all, right? Is that the one? Uh, yes, yes, correct. Uh, yeah, yeah. And also, these icon phones, etc. So, mm -hmm. in the end, they, they matter. They they should not load with the lowest priority. Yeah. But they're like not cru uh, exactly. they're, I think less crucial than, uh, for example, the fonts and uh, the logo of, of uh, yeah. this year. Like we don't expect people to go in uh, in there and and you know uh, interact that early maybe they will maybe they won't i don't know you know the analytics could, could probably uh, provide that but in a, a sort of uh, educated guess you know we're thinking that you know these flags and whatnot come in later in the uh, loading process so i definitely yeah. understood that yeah cool um we have time for one more uh let me see what time is it um, you know what? Let's go for it. We'll, we'll make it quick. You know, we started late, so again, we want to apologize to everyone who stick who stuck around. Uh, 
Right. But, so uh, that, this is a nice one. Oh, uh, nice. So, so that's the that's this one with like the very big hero image. Uh, scale mm -hmm. modelers they like to see uh, nice big images. So that's like in very appealing for uh, for for them. So mm -hmm. that's I would say that's positive. Now, what is the performance impact? Now, let me. Where is it? Where is it? I see them. So LCP two point four seconds. Um, first byte six hundred eighty one. But here you instantly see if you're looking at the graph. In this yep. preview, you see that there is um, something going on yep. and there is room for improvement. So let's go for mm -hmm. run five again. Then we know if they have a cache or a CDN cache, and then it's uh, then 412 milliseconds. Again, for a fast connection, is this rather on the higher end? Mm -hmm. But uh, they you instantly, like, you instantly see that here these images. Uh, so that's the object. So that's the big hero image. Well, wow. okay. looking at the details, we're looking at 938 uh, kilobytes. Wow. Uh, so that's a huge amount of time. Yeah. Uh, but then also here, this one, for example, here, 14, like 1.4 wow. megabytes. Yeah, and one and a half megs almost. On... Where is the raw details object? Oh, let's click here. That's one you don't even see. Yeah. Uh, Above, above the fold, so it's right. like like this is like this small mm -hmm. image. Uh, so loading lazy for this one would likely not help because it's potentially just it's like still a bit That's, too yeah. high. But yeah, if you look at the preview of this image and then the the big dimensions, however, is it uh, the big dimensions of the other one? But yeah, you saw it was like a very big uh, image. Yeah. Um, so that's something they need to fix. Let me close that one. Uh, I see him. That's the one. I need yeah, um, so that's definitely something they need to um, they need to fix. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, yeah, also from a third party perspective, I would say it's reasonable. Um, again, here the fonts, you could argue if they if they move to their own uh, domain, that would make things faster. They are using Google Tag Manager, but rather at the end. But yeah, adding loading lazy and then modern formats. Mm -hmm. And then download the right, uh, yeah. Make mm -hmm. make actual thumbnails instead of loading the um, the full. What is it? Uh, yeah, the full uh, full resolution. 250, 200, 5, 2560. That's wow. yeah, that's like uh, that's like crazy. Um, so that's definitely something to do. Yeah, and what I haven't touched yet, but all the websites so far they have gzip, and yeah, more modern uh, modern broccoli compression would of course. Help as well in the critical in the critical path. Mm -hmm. Although I haven't seen a single one where really a let's say the JavaScript or the CSS was was like extremely huge. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in my view that's a no brainer to enable that as uh, as um, as well. Um, let me check the response. Yeah, that looks okay. That looks okay. Um, and I haven't checked, but I assume that browser caching, uh, you use long-term TTLs, et cetera. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's it. And, uh, I saw, four, I think what looked like a four, four at the bottom of that, that, uh, this page, uh, oh, yeah. a typical one is they basically have, oh, okay. A, yeah. okay, that's a good catch. Yeah. They have, they point to a fev icon, which they yeah. don't have and Provide. they generate the four, four. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's something to fix. I don't think it really impacts the loading of the website, but yeah, yeah that's something they yeah. should they should they Want should see that. Awesome, awesome. You know, the the one thing that's been um, really uh, interesting in uh, in sort of like your audit style, and and I really like the idea of starting with the best case scenario, so that you know if there's still some smoke at that point, we know that in a more constrained environment like, uh, you know, 4G and even further away, you know, we'd probably see fire, you know. So I, I do like that that sort of style of investigation. And again, you know, you've heard me say this before, folks, uh, and, you know, I'll tweet about it. I'll talk about it here. Uh, you know, auditing is really investigative work, you know, and it's about recognizing patterns, you know, like, Tim will pull out a waterfall and from a distance tell you there are some issues. You know, we don't have to get into the, the finite details, but we can see the shape of a waterfall be like, eh, there's something that's potentially not right here. 
Uh, and that is important, you know. I've talked about this before years ago. I think uh, Andy Davies and uh, and um, Simon, what's Simon's last name? Hearn. Hearn. Yes. And uh, they had this podcast together and, you know, they talked about, you know, the experience of having looked at, you know, countless waterfalls over and over again and recognizing patterns. And I think one of the important parts, too, here is that, you know, it's about also being curious. You know, it's not always going after the big sites. You know, let me go look at, you know, Nike.com or, uh, you know, CNN, you know, the one that everyone likes to look at, et cetera, et cetera. You will discover, you will make discoveries with these odd sites here. You know, what, what, what have we looked at? We've looked at, you know, uh, car sites, automobiles, uh, you know, uh, toy sites, et cetera, et cetera. I think, you know, we'll recognize patterns, you know, even in the most sort of mundane looking or seeming uh, endeavors online, you know. And um, I think these are great opportunities to sort of like understand, study, recognize patterns, like I said, uh, you know, uh, see where some improvements can be made and, and things like that. And I think it's super important to be curious all the time, you know, and I'm not saying that you have to be a super nerd about it, but, you know, I would look at a site and just pop open the hood, you know, what can we discover? And I think that's super duper important. Um, and again, you know, I talked about at the start of the, the stream today, you know, we want to have a bit more of a worldly perspective. And that's been fun knowing that, you know, we can look at a site that was based out of Sweden, but we want to see how it loads in Australia. We want to see how it loads in, you know, Germany. Um, and some of the challenges that would come about if there are any at all so uh that's been uh, that's been an awesome uh, sort of discovery there um you know before you take off uh, this one thing i i wanted to uh, or before we close out today's uh, session one thing that i wanted to mention for the fo few folks that are still here and listening um a good friend of ours um the good people should i say uh, good friends of ours uh, plural at smashing mag are doing a workshop next week and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can sort of share my own stuff here, share my screen, uh, share screen, two monitors. Uh, yeah, got it. While you're doing that, uh, one of the other benefits of testing with fast connections is that uh -huh. you get faster results, especially on slower sites. If you're looking, using testing in 3G and it's a slow site and you click, you need to wait for five tests. I don't like to wait. So testing under faster connections gives you also a quicker result uh, to look at. Indeed. That said, um, Tim, if anyone wants to find you, where can they do that? Um, they can find me in Belgium. Okay. If you are not in Belgium, then um, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, okay. So my Twitter handle is at uh, Tim Vereke. So basically the name you see here on the, on the, on the screen. Amazing. Um, and also on LinkedIn, you can find me and uh, yeah, I'm a, uh, Always happy with followers. I'm always happy to follow you back in case you tweet about web performance, then I would like to follow you back. Awesome. Um, um, we need to do this again. That was fun. You know, yeah, well, thank again, you. Again, I'm going to go ahead and apologize for Canary for just completely messing up the start of this amazing show. It was also, you know, it was, the gods were like with me this morning. Everything was fine. And then Canary was like, dude, I don't see your camera. I don't see your laptop camera. It's not happening. And uh, I was just bummed. Oh, anyhow, um, folks, thank you very much for joining us. This was another insightful edition of WebPage Test Live with Tim. Um, and I think we're going to do this again because, again, it, it was really like it was fun looking at the, the sort of international perspective of resource loading. Uh, but, you know, you can catch us again, I think, in two weeks. So that brings us to March 24th, which is going to be our next one. We hope to have some earlier announcements uh, with our speakers uh, next time. But either way, please follow uh, web, well, real at real web page test. For more insights on Twitter, you can follow me as well at Henri Helvetica. Again, what you see on the screen with the uh, 
at logo or at sign, pardon me. Uh, again, I mean, you'll hear me talk about performance from time to time, you know, with the odd sort of like running content because I'm training. And that being said, I think that's it. So everyone, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure. I hope you took in some of these insights. We should have this video cut, edited, and uh, uploaded to our YouTube channel uh, within the next, I'd say, God, I'm going to say 48 hours. I might try to get it done by tomorrow because this was such a great show. Tim, thank you very much. And we will talk to you soon again. Merci, Henri. Thank you, Henri. Oh, je t'en prie, je t'en prie. Avec plaisir. <laughs> cheers, cheers, cheers. Cheers.